Hey guys, it's me, Crystal Ann Compton. I hope you are having a beautiful day wherever you are on the planet today. I wanted to make this video because I kind of want to give you an update of what's going on and also kind of tell you about something really cool that happened and then give you some tools or some advice that'll help you kind of have the same results that I've been having. First and foremost, I do want to say that after my video last week in which I kind of came at you, broke down, I was broke down, I wasn't feeling good. Uh, I explained that I've been having some problems and I told you kind of what was going on and also that I was on a pretty uh, powerful regimen of acupuncture and Chinese medicine. And this has been going on for about seven weeks. Now, even though I am feeling very symptomatic and there's a lot going on and I'm experiencing a lot of dusting up in the physical body, I am at the same time well into the detoxification process. No question about that. And you've probably heard me say a million times before that a detoxified physical instrument or a detoxified body is in fact a high vibration body. Even though I might not be feeling necessarily super high vibe because I'm symptomatic, that doesn't mean I'm not detoxifying and that I'm actually clicking into more solid alignment with spirit or with the world of spirit. I'm definitely doing that. And as a result of that, I'm experiencing a lot of conditions and things that are happening around me that are absolutely evidential, not the least of which is I've been having very spiritual, dynamic dreams. And another thing I've said before a million times, and this is so true, is that the world of dreaming, the landscape of our dreams is the easiest way that spirit has to give us guidance or to drop a download or to create an encounter with the world of, uh, excuse me, with departed loved ones or with emissaries, spirit guides, or with higher dimensional consciousness. Like in your dreams, it is easier to do that kind of work or have those experiences because we're not throwing up all this resistance. In our waking life, walking around the planet, encountering people, having all of our thoughts, our ego mind, monkey mind is always going. It's harder for us to just be an open channel to receive information because we're resisting a lot of times. We're talking ourselves out of the messages that come in because we are using our logic. We are also reactive to the world. And so we're not paying attention. We're dismissing it. So when we're dreaming, those walls, that resistance falls away. We are just there in our subconscious domain and we are accessible. So if you're not paying attention to what's happening in your dreams, you are missing out on the majority of what's available to you. Because again, this is the easiest way to pull down this type of energy and information. So for me, I've been getting a lot of really interesting and sometimes crazy dreams. Now, after my last video, which was just a week ago, I, within a day or so, fell into like a really terrible cold and flu. And even this, <laughs> even this was as a result of my detoxification process. Because as I am detoxifying, my immune system is responding. It's trying to deal with all of the things that are coming at me. And optimistic viruses, optimistic pathogens have an easier connection point with me because my immune system is otherwise occupied. So long story short, I got really sick. Okay, Sunday, Monday, yes, all the way up to yesterday, which was Thursday, I had a terrible headache. Here again, I start getting hysterical. <laughs> I'm just crazy. Um, my husband calls it my fear bucket, and I, I, I do work around that. But I just started thinking, am I having an aneurysm? Like, I never have headaches. Why so much pain? I couldn't open my eyes. I couldn't walk around. It was like a bummer. Plus all the other stuff that comes along with it. Sore throat, congestion, nausea, the whole nine yards. I was out of it. But I was also connecting with my dreams. And on Tuesday night, I had a really interesting dream. And I recall it vividly. And as soon as I woke up in the morning, I remembered it. And in this dream, I was standing before a mirror and I was gazing at myself. And I kind of was in my ultimate form in my reflection, meaning like my hair was longer. I was wearing like some really awesome clothing that was kind of spiritual, or at least it felt like it was. Um, I just seemed healthy and vibrant. And I was looking at myself and perceiving all of this when all of a sudden I saw this flash of what 
felt to me in the dream like starlight, like just a and it happened right here in my hairline in the center of my really big forehead. It was like a and I leaned in in my dream into the mirror and I looked at it and I actually saw a silver needle sticking right out of this point of my head. I wake up in the morning and I can tell that that is a meaningful dream. And here's where I just want to say that spiritual dreams or dreams that have information for us, energy for us, downloads for us, those always feel differently than normal dreams do. Normal dreams are a byproduct of the brain processing all the details of the life, the day before, the week before. It's just processing through this and letting it go or dumping it out. That's what a normal dream is. And those kind of dreams are chaotic. They tend to be nonsensical. We can wake up and we should document that. We'll talk about it in a moment, but we might not really be able to pull together the meaning of what those dreams are about. And those are just your standard dreams. Spiritual dreams feel a lot different. They have a different resonance. They actually have a different heft. Now, I would often say that, but then I would also explain, well, it's not actually heft. I mean, they don't have a weight, but I'm going to change that because that's not true. Just as our thoughts have substance and a thought with intention has even more substance, so too does a spiritual dream or any sort of encounter with spirit have a different kind of substance or residue, if you will. And when you wake up, you can feel that. You can sense that what came through was important for you. There's a different vibration to it. And when you feel that, you should pay attention to that. And so when I woke up, I felt that about this dream and I paid attention to it. So fast forward to yesterday, still feeling like a bag of ASS, not good at all. I went into my acupuncturist and as he was poking me with all his needles, I said, hey, by the way, I had this dream and it feels important to me. It feels like it was an evidential dream and I can talk to him in this way. We talk about Kundalini, we talk about pineal, we talk about all that stuff. And so I said, is there an acupuncture point right here um, in the middle of the forehead at the hairline? And he said, in fact, there is. And I said, well, can, can you explain to me what it does? Like, does it off gas something? Does it balance something? Does it open a channel to something? He's like, I can, but let me actually pull out my book and read you the description. So as I'm on the table, he pulls out his book, which is like 2000 years old or some such. And he said, oh, okay. He's like, this acupuncture point is called the courtyard of the spirit. And it's indicated for many things. When I say indicated, what I mean is you would use, utilize this acupuncture point for a variety of reasons, some of which are pain in the head, headaches, congestion in the head, also congestion normally, like I've got congestion in my lungs, I've been sick. It's useful for that. In addition to that, it is used for the activation, the balancing of the pineal gland. And of course, we're interested in the pineal gland. If you're a spiritual person and you're not interested in your pineal gland and keeping it healthy and getting it back online, here again, you're missing out on so much in the world of spirit because the pineal gland is literally the microphone of the spirit. Is this thing on? It's what spirit uses in order to get us a message. And it's also the hub for all of our clairs, clairvoyance, clairaudience, and so on and so forth. So if our pineal gland is shut down, if our pineal gland is non-functional, then part of our access, if not all of our access, is also cut off. So this particular point dealt with the pineal gland, which is important. And so I asked him, well, can we treat this point. Can we actually stick a needle in it? And so he said, of course. And he looked in his books and he said, there's some complimentary points on the head. So he gave me the acupuncture. And as soon as he did, when I tell you, I felt these rushes of electricity all over my head and down my spine. I could just feel it working. My The pain in my head almost immediately abated, but also I just felt energetically things clicking into place, shifting around. It was really powerful. Now, <laughs> had I not been paying attention to my dream, had I not had the wherewithal to know, hey, this feels different, meaning it's a, it's a, an important thing to pay attention to, I would have never taken it in to my doctor. I would have never 
actually asked for this treatment. And I believe, in fact, nay, I know that spirit was giving me this medical treatment, not just for the physical, which it helped, but also for the spiritual and the energetic. And all of this makes sense because, again, I'm detoxing, I'm fine-tuning, I'm turning the dial so I can be fine-tuned spiritually. That's the whole intention that took me into acupuncture in the first place. Not just my physicality, like wanting to be well, of course that's it as well, but also through the physicality, making this deeper connection to the world of spirit so that I can hear more loudly. I can sense more profoundly. I can interpret and utilize the information that spirit is giving me. Now, this is the domain in which I work. I I know how to do all that stuff. But as I've said before, last year was pretty quiet. And it's not just because my guide said, we're not talking to you, figure this out. It's also because I was in this state of toxification, toxicity, I guess we would say. So that was really cool. And today I was actually able to like get out of the house. I'm feeling tired right now. I'm going to rest, but I was able to get out in the sunshine. I just, I felt like a 180 turnaround and I'm so grateful for that. So I'm also grateful for spirit for giving me this dream. Now you as a spiritual person should be working with your dreams. This is a vibrant dynamic and again evidential landscape and if you're not paying attention to your dreams if you are not cueing your subconscious to bring on the dreams then you are missing out on the majority of what is available to you because again it's the easiest way for spirit to access us and i want to close this video by giving you three tips that can get you to start working with your dreams right now so that you can have more of these dreams and in fact so that you can up level and have even more dynamic encounters as you're dreaming things like lucid dreams and astral projection the first thing that i would recommend to you is that you begin now to prime yourself before you go to sleep to prime yourself just means to get ready for to attune to and also to implant in this scenario to implant the subconscious with a directive that it will then carry out the reason we do this before bed is because this again is when we are in that hypnagogic state we are in that trance like state and when we're in that state again the walls fall away we're not resisting and so in this space when we're in bed and we're drowsy we begin to speak affirmations of that which we want to manifest In our case, that is, we want to manifest spiritually evidential dreams. And so we would spend about three to five minutes just repeating to ourselves an affirmation that represents that. For example, you might say, I am having spiritually evidential dreams. I am rendezvousing with my spirit guides or my divine emissaries as I dream. Now you notice I didn't speak that in future tense, if you will. I spoke that in present present tense because if I spoke it as I will have evidential dreams or I will rendezvous with my divine emissaries in my dream time, that I will indicates that I am not and that sends a counterintuitive, counterproductive message to the subconscious. Anytime we're trying to manifest anything, we always speak from the energy of already being that already having that already knowing that and in our case we are speaking from the present as already having that i am having spiritual dreams i am rendezvousing with my guides in the world of spirit as i dream present tense is important again i spend anywhere from three to five minutes just saying this over and over and what i try to do is lull myself to sleep in this intention in the awareness of this intention, like I'm feeling this, I want this, I'm, I'm transmitting this intention while actually saying these affirmations, not necessarily out loud, you can say them in your mind, but I'm speaking this or I'm thinking these affirmations, and then I fall asleep. The reason this is so incredibly important is because sleep 
Dreaming, that's the domain of the subconscious. Without going into an entire lesson about the conscious, the subconscious, and the feeling, which connects the two, I've got lots of videos on that. I'm just going to say that the subconscious is the womb of creation. We are the creators. And when we want to create something, that intention is received by the womb of creation, which is the subconscious. The womb receives the seed of that and then creates it or births it into our reality. And this reality is our 3D reality and every reality that is connected to that. The subconscious animates this. The subconscious brings this into the objective reality. So if we fall asleep and slip into the playground of the subconscious, which animates holding the intention and the affirmation of what we want to manifest, we will receive it that much more quickly. So prime yourself before to go, you go to sleep. I would say, and I've told my students that it will take anywhere from a week, well, sometimes less than that. It could be that night, but a week to two weeks, usually before you start having these evidential dreams. It could take a little longer upwards towards a month, but if you're diligent, if you're priming every night, you will start to see an uptick in the quality of your dreams, period. Now, the second thing that you can do in order to have and process spiritually evidential dreams is you wake up. When you wake up, you immediately document what's been given. Even if what's been given doesn't make sense, even if it's spare or sparse, like all you feel is maybe an emotion, nothing else, no details. I just feel anxious or I just feel joyful. I don't know why. Write it down. The physical act of writing embeds that which we intend into the energy and the awareness. It gives it the space to actually root in our consciousness. And what happens when something roots? It grows. What happens when something grows? It gets bigger. And when our intentions get bigger in our energy, they spill over into our physical reality. Just writing it down gives the intention wings. Further, writing down whatever came through that you can recall in your dream time also gives you the opportunity to sift through what's been given, even if it's nonsensical, even if it makes absolutely no logical sense, you write it down because you'll see after days and weeks, months, and even years, you will go back through your dream journal and that which appeared to be nonsensical suddenly emerges as forming patterns or, oh, a name came through. It made no sense six months ago, but now I've met this person and this person is an important part of my life. My dreams revealed that to me precognitively, predictively. Had I not been documenting diligently, I would have not known that. So write everything down. The physical act of writing calls more dreams calls more dreams into the experience because you're writing about it and you're intending for this to be the case. Now, the last thing I just want to tell you is that you can ask for something, of course. And if you ask for something in the right energy, which is ask as if you are already that or you have that already. If you ask it, you will receive it. But if you're not paying attention you might not know that you received it. That's the first thing of this last part. You have to be paying attention to receive the answers. You can't drop the ball here. With our dreams, you've got to be paying attention. You've got to be going over your journals. You've got to be having that intention. You've got to be priming yourself. This is your asking and you will receive. I just told you, one week to four weeks, you're going to be getting these dreams. But the second part of this last point is you have to then act on it. You see, what I did this week is I acted on it. First of all, I woke up, I felt it. That's a different energy. That's my first hint. I need to be paying attention. Second thing I did is I wrote it out so I would remember it. Third thing is I acted on it. I took it into my practitioner. I said, hey, is this a point? Like, let's talk about this. He went on to explain it. And then I said, hey, let's put a pin in it. <laughs> Literally, let's Let's do this work. He did it and I felt so much better as a result. But if I didn't act on it, if I got in my way, right? And got all shy. Oh God, I can't tell him I had this dream. He'll never believe me. It's so weird. If you don't act on it, you don't receive in fullness that which is being given. 
Please know that if it's coming from spirit, you can trust it. Please know if it's coming from God, it is for your betterment and edification. Please know that if you've received it through a dream or through inspiration, through creativity, you can trust that. So you have full permission to act upon it. Acting upon it is the only way that you receive in fullness the blessing that is being given. To not act upon it transmits to spirit that you don't trust, that you're not paying attention, that you're not co-creating your own experience, and spirit becomes quieter as a result. We don't want this. We want to be getting these spiritually evidential dreams. Don't you want guidance from your creator, from your higher self, from your divine emissaries? Wouldn't you love to have an open stream of communication both ways with the world of spirit? Well, you've already got it, but it's up to you to interact with it. That's what I did. And even though I'm still feeling a little bit under the weather, to tell you that I feel so much better is such an understatement. I'm about to go to Phoenix next week, where it will be, by the way, 110 to 115 degrees. I don't get it. That is the surface of the sun. I'm going to be there. <clears throat> and while I'm there, I'm going to be continuing my detoxification process. I'm going to be continuing to be paying attention to everything that Spirit's giving me. I'm going to be continuing to act on it. And I will come back in another video, hopefully next week from Phoenix, to update you with what's going on. Okay, guys, on that note, I have nothing but love for you. Also, my voice is failing. I got to go. I'll see you in the next video. Join me this year at the 2019 Bliss Retreat in beautiful Loveland, Colorado. The Bliss Retreat is a four-night, five-day, blissed-out extravaganza where there will be sacred ceremonies, spiritual workshops, and nightly services with me, Crystal Ann Compton. Go to theblissretreat.org to learn more. I hope to see you there.